Hi everybody, JJ here with Asus. Excited to be here on New X YouTube channel to be able to talk a little bit about the brand new X670 eBase chipset and some things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind for the latest generation of Ryzen Zen 4 or Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and what you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind to be able to get the best experience for your build. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about something that a lot of people have interested in and that's gonna be memory, specifically DDR5. Now these series of CPUs only support DDR5 memory. They have no support for DDR4. So just keep that in mind. When you're selecting your memory, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is DDR5 based as DDR4 modules are physically not compatible with these motherboards and the integrated memory controller that you're gonna find inside of the latest generation of Ryzen 7000 series CPUs does not support DDR4. The next most important thing to keep in mind is going to be an actual term for a feature or essentially a portion of the CPU and that's going to be called the IMC. The IMC is the integrated memory controller and it defines how the actual memory works in relation to the CPU itself and overall on the platform. So when we talk about the platform we're namely speaking to the kind of the motherboard. And the reason why the IMC is important is because the IMC defines the operating speed for the memory. Now for this generation AMD essentially has two different operating parameters that are supported and this actually depends on the number of DIMMs that you have installed. So when we take a look at, let's say, a classic kit of memory, so we've got right here this G-Skill uh, Trident Z. This is an Expo certified kit, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, with essentially kits that are sold in two DIMM configurations, which is going to be the majority of all DDR5 kits that are sold on the market. You would be taking a look at a standard, what's called one slot per channel, one DIMM per channel configuration, or essentially two DIMMs installed in your motherboard, such as two DIMMs installed right here next to me on this extreme board. Now in this configuration, the standard memory speed that is supported by AMD and that memory controller is going to be 5200 MT. Now, what happens if you decide to go with a not recommended configuration and you decide to go with four DIMMs or what would be referred to as two SPC and two DPC, so two slot per channel or two DIMM per channel. That would mean that you again would be taking your kit, take for instance again this kit, and you'd be buying two of them to have four DIMMs. Now, the first thing to keep in mind in this respect is generally you don't need to do this. DDR5 supports much higher densities than in the prior generation of DDR4, meaning that you can easily get 32 and even 64 gigabytes in two DIMMs. So the need to actually shift to four DIMMs is not sensible. The other benefit by maintaining a one DPC and a one slot per channel configuration is going to be the support for a higher memory divider. So we talked about that one SPC, one DPC configuration being 5200 MT. Well, in a two DPC, two SPC configuration, you are essentially going to be limited to 3600 MT. So this means a lower operating speed ultimately affording you less performance. Now, in either scenario, you're still gonna have a great level of performance and overall great experience, but it's important to keep in mind that if you're looking to get the absolute highest level of performance, you do generally wanna to adhere to that one slot per channel and one DIMM per channel configuration. So I've got two sticks of memory here, and you might be thinking about, well, Hey, JJ, I know that they actually have higher speed memory kits. And right now, if I'm taking a look at maybe the Newegg page, I might see speeds like maybe 5,600, might see 6,000, I might see 6,200, 6,400 MT kits of memory. Can I run these on an actual X670 base motherboard? And then of course, on a Zen 4 series based CPU. And the short answer is yes, it is a possibility. The reason why I say it's a possibility is because here you are referring to an overclocked divider. Essentially, these are going to be kits, such for instance, this kit right here is a 6,400 kit of memory. Now this memory can potentially run on the motherboard, but it's important to keep in mind that when you do go about overclocking, there are multiple things that affect the overall overclocking experience. One, the quality of the motherboard, two, the firmware, and then you actually have a couple of other small variables that can be hard to kind of know whether or not they're gonna affect you. One being the quality of your memory controller. This actually means that there's variability to the memory controller, that if you were to take 10 CPUs, for instance, you might have some CPUs that have a little bit of a higher performing memory controller and ones that might perform at a little bit of a lower level. This is similar to kind of the overclocking variability that users understand when it comes to CPU centric overclocking. So with this in mind, it's important to note that if you do buy an overclocked kit of memory, that there is the possibility you may not be able to run that memory even though that memory in itself has been validated and maybe your motherboard has also been fully validated to run at that speed. Now, there are some things that of course you can do uh, to be able to still maintain a higher level of performance. Uh, an example of this would be maybe dropping down to a different memory profile that the actual kit might feature. Say for instance, it might be it has 6200, but it might also have maybe a 6200 and then also a 6000 profile. And you can drop down to the profile to see if your actual system configuration can run at one of those lower speeds, which would still be overclocked and higher performing than that 5600 MT. Another scenario is sometimes maybe 
not necessarily going to a higher frequency, but benefiting from the better tuning that those dims might have and dropping the actual cast timings to be able to go ahead and maybe improve on overall efficiency for your memory. So there's a couple of different options. Now, next up, let's go ahead and talk about AMD Expo. This is an exciting new overclocking profile that's been designed and developed by AMD specifically for AMD enabled platforms. In the past, if you wanted to have overclocked memory, you might have utilized something that was called XMP, which was an extreme memory profile, which is designed and validated for Intel based platforms. And while manufacturers like ourselves, Asus, have worked to be able to enable XMP based memory to run on AMD based motherboards, it's different than, let's say, having the memory be optimally tuned and designed and validated for an AMD platform from its very start. And that's the big benefit that you have with AMD Expo. It has been tuned and validated specifically for AMD enabled platforms. And all ASUS motherboards fully support the AMD Expo feature. So how can you take advantage of AMD Expo? Well, that's pretty straightforward. Essentially make sure that your memory kit is an AMD Expo kit, which you'll see an actually a little uh, actual badge on your actual kit of memory, whether it's gonna be physically or whether it's gonna be online, you'll see that actual AMD Expo certification badge. If it has that, then that means all you're gonna need to do is go into the UEFI BIOS, toggle an option to go ahead and enable it. And then if your system and that IMC supports running at that divider, then the system will post and boot up and you'll be good to go. As always, I would recommend that you consider running a memory stress test once you've gone ahead and installed your AMD Expo kit and you have it up and running within the operating system. Now do keep in mind that independent of AMD Expo on ASUS based motherboards, you will find other options for overclocking your DRAM. These will include support for XMP based memory modules, which if you install an XMP based memory module, once again, if you enter into the UEFI BIOS, you'll see an option that's called DOCP. The DOCP will allow us to essentially use our own internal rule set read the information from the XMP profile and attempt to auto apply it on an AMD platform. We also have a feature called AMP, uh, which will allow us to go ahead and take specific kits, which if they are compatible, will actually be reflected inside the UEFI BIOS with an AMP toggle to again, offer you a very easy experience of being able to maximize the performance for that memory module. And we'll also actually offer two specific profiles, one specifically tuned for frequency, and then another one that's tuned specifically for lower operating timings. And all corresponding values like the actual memory divider and corresponding voltages are automatically applied for you. So very similar to the uh, DOCP XMP experience or to the AMD uh, Expo experience, all of them are streamlined and designed to give you an overall better DRAM experience. So last but not least, let's go ahead and get into a couple of key factors that you're going to want to keep in mind if you do go and decide to pick up memory that's going to be overclocked. The first one's going to be one uh, that again, you're not necessarily going to be able to guarantee that you can overclock to the highest DDR5 values that you might see in terms of kits that are going to be available. For most users, we generally would recommend targeting either a 5600 kit of memory, uh, which will be slightly overclocked compared to your 5200 megahertz. So with that information out of the way, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about just some last items that you're going to want to keep in mind for DDR5 memory and which kits might make the most sense for you. The first one is going to be that, well, again, you're not going to be able to guarantee the quality of your memory controller. So it's important to keep in mind sometimes a little bit more of a conservative pursuit in terms of the type of memory that you select. We generally would recommend 5600 with a more aggressive timing set that would be available. This is going to be a great option at ensuring a higher level of interoperability and compatibility. 6000 empty kits will definitely still be a possibility and they're going to have a fairly good likelihood of being able to be reached and stable and be able to be run on motherboards. But as always, keep in mind that there is going to be variability. And as always, we would strongly recommend make sure to download the latest UEFI BIOS to be able to get the best DDR5 experience, especially over the coming months. Now, last but not least, there are some things you want to keep in mind once you do enable an overclock kit of memory on your system. You will essentially have some byproducts, very similar to overclocking your CPU, where you will generally see an increase in temperature. You'll also see an increase in power consumption. You'll similarly see the same exact thing happen on an actual DDR5 overclock configuration. One, uh, these kits of memory will generally require more voltage. The default for DDR5 is going to be 1.1 volts, and you'll commonly see that these kits of memory, uh, they have actually been tested for this, but they're running at a higher voltage and therefore will consume a higher level of power. They also will produce more heat. So that is also something to be mindful of. And this will also directly affect somewhat your CPU temperatures and a bit to a degree, the power consumption of your system. You'll see your power consumption go up a little bit, uh, whether it's going to be, of course, at load or whether it's going to be an idle state. And also the overall CPU package power itself and the CPU package uh, for the temperatures would also go up a little bit because uh, the actual uh, memory controller is being fed generally a little bit of a higher level of voltage to be able to run those overclock 
lock configurations. So in the last but not least, there are a few things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind that will be essentially byproducts of you running an overclocked kit of memory. One is you'll generally see a little bit of an increase in terms of temperatures and a little bit of an increase in terms of actual power consumption, especially at idle. And the reason why this happens is that you're gonna be actually running memory at a higher voltage. So the default memory voltage is uh, for DDR5 gonna be 1.1 volts. And it's not uncommon that you'll be probably seeing voltages between 1.3 to maybe even higher than 1.4. In addition to this, you'll also see that there's additional voltages that have to be driven at actually a higher level than stock to the CPU and the memory controller to be able to support running at higher frequencies. Frequencies. Uh, because of that, you generally will see an increase in idle temperatures and an idle power consumption for your CPU. So you can see here, I've also got our Crosshair X670E Jane-based motherboard. The big difference that you'll see on this motherboard is that it features only two DIMM slots. Now this actual type of DIMM topology on a motherboard will help to actually offer a higher level of DRAM overclocking capability, especially for that one slot per channel and one DIMM per channel configuration. So if you're somebody that's really aggressively targeting, maybe wanting to go with those higher values, such as 62, 64, 6600, any future higher speed kits, and also really appreciate kind of tweaking and tuning your DRAM to the highest performance levels, then you also may want to consider instead of a traditional 4DIM based enabled motherboard, a 2DIM enabled based motherboard. So that wraps up our quick insights video on DDR5 and all the things you're going to want to keep in mind for DDR5 on the X670E based chipset, as well as for the latest generation Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. Make sure to go ahead and drop your feedback and thoughts down in the comment section down below. And you can also go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button. So with that, take care, take it easy, and best of luck with your build.